Hello there, how are you? Good, I'm really good too. Thanks for asking, that's great to know. You're sweet. Anyway, my name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe and also finishing up a game called Once Upon a Coma. If you guys wanna take a look at those games, click the link in the description. And also remember you can support on Patreon, get a free copy of my game, Pinstripe. All right, so today's a special day because we're gonna jump inside of Unity and I'm gonna show you how you can quickly create a system for a 2.5D game. Another way of putting it is creating a 2D game with a ton of depth. Um, that's basically what a 2.5D game is. Utilizes some 3, 3D elements and some 2D elements. And honestly, guys, Unity has all the tools available pretty much out of the box. We'll need to install some plugins, but they're all free. Everything is really easy to install. So come on, let's jump inside of Unity and take a look. But first, before we get started, guys, I want to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Thank you so much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an incredible website for you guys to learn about pretty much anything you want to learn about. Specifically, if you want to learn about game design, it's an incredible place. Whether it's audio design for your games, or 2D illustration, or animation, or Unreal, coding, storytelling, marketing, business, management, whatever it is you need to learn about game development, it's on Skillshare. The coolest part about this ad read is, hey, get two free months of Skillshare by clicking the link in the description. You really can't beat that, guys. Give it a shot, see what happens. I love Skillshare, it's a great way to learn about game development. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so right now I have a very basic um, scene set up. Um, we're in 3D mode, we're not actually in a 2D mode. We've created a 3D project, and you'll see I've got a lot of different 2D elements and 3D elements combined. I have a three-dimensional camera, meaning it's in perspective mode, not orthographic mode. Um, it's using a background color, just a solid background color. You'll notice there's fog as well, so we're just taking advantage of the fog settings in our lighting tab. Um, and just be sure you turn off auto-generate. That's, that's gonna slow down things while you're working because it's gonna start baking in lighting. And I've also just turned off mixed lighting. Just FYI, just if you want things to be faster while you're working, we're not gonna be working with baked lighting at all in this case. So we have some fog settings. It's set to linear mode. Um, we have set our end to 200. Um, and if, as you can see, if I set it to like 100, it just brings our fog closer and closer to the camera. So we're gonna make it 200 and we have a terrain in front of our camera and then we also have what I really love about some new tools available in Unity, um, our sprite shapes. We've just created a basic sprite shape here and as you can see it has an edge collider in there as well. I've set it to update the collider so it's basically going to draw a polygon collider on top of this white sprite shape. So if we hit play, you'll notice that we're using Cinemachine, which is basically placing um, or following our character um, as we jump and run through this very plain basic scene. And the Cinemachine is just set to follow this character here, which is the character Robot Boy, which is included in the standard assets on the asset store. So if you go to the asset store, all you gotta do is click or type in standard assets. And what I like to do is install pretty much every single standard asset, especially when I'm starting a game, just because I don't know exactly what I'm gonna need from the standard assets. Usually I'll use a couple things. And in this case, we're just using the basic character robot boy. And we're dragging this into the scene and having the Cinemachine camera follow the robot boy. Now let's go ahead and start editing and manipulating this terrain to give you an idea of why we're even using the terrain. So typically with 2D games, what I'll do is I'll layer several PNGs. So if I'm creating some mountains, I'm gonna have like five layers um, going into the Z axis. But the terrain is really cool because we can actually just paint those layers onto the terrain. And because we've utilized the fog in our lighting tab, we're slowly gonna create a lot of depth. So as you can see, we can create some really huge mountains um, in the background. And so you can imagine creating this in 2D. This would be a layer, that would be a layer, and that would be a layer. But with this terrain tool, we can actually, whoa, you can hold shift, by the way, to lower things. <laughs> with this terrain tool, you can see we've added a lot of depth here um, just by clicking around, which is really, really cool. 
And obviously, for those of you who are familiar with the terrain, you can simply um, use these brushes here. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, I can show you really quickly how we could create a lot of detail just by selecting this brush here, which is going to add a lot more um, sort of bumpiness to our terrain. So you can see we're adding a lot of depth to our scene here um, just by utilizing Unity's 3D tools. You just want to be careful you don't get too close to the camera because we're going to start seeing these ridges um, sort of come up over this uh, sprite shape so we don't we definitely don't want that um, so overall this looks pretty good um, and just FYI as we go through this tutorial guys this isn't gonna look perfect but this is the basic setup of how you can utilize Unity's 3D tools in a 2D game so there is our terrain let's hit play and show you how it's gonna look here so pretty cool we, we need to clean that up there but overall, we have a 2D look. Obviously, you can tell it's a little bit 3D, but because the texture is so basic, um, there's, there's really no texture on the mountains. You can see that how it could look like a 2D game, but it also has a ton of depth and we achieved it um, really quickly. We didn't have to draw any of this in Photoshop. Um, this is all done using the Unity uh, terrain tool. So now let's go ahead and change this sprite shape to sort of fit in with this world. So I'm gonna edit our sprite shape, clicking this edit spline button. And what we can do is start adding hills. And you can see that we can actually just create this really large um, section to walk on in the foreground. I love the sprite shape because this is totally different than your typical um, creation of a 2D game. Um, in my in my experience what you do is you either create a tile based system or you create a huge PNG in Photoshop like this would be one giant PNG and then you put a polygon collider on top of that but this is awesome because you're actually creating basically a 3d mesh but it's only in the X and Y axis and the benefits of that is it doesn't really take up your RAM and so you can create this huge huge P, um, not a PNG um, mesh and that mesh is going to allow us to explore and have this open world feel so as you can see it's basically 3d um, but it's really a two it's really a 2d mesh in a 3d space so let's finish up this mesh here and draw it all the way over here and let's just be sure that we let's raise it up a little bit so it doesn't sort of interfere with the edges of the, the terrain and be sure we bring our character controller up as well so we don't follow through. So let's click on our sprite shape here. And actually, just, let's just hit play mode and I wanna show you how it looks. So we have this white um, ground and it definitely doesn't match the background at all. But as you can see, we can explore really far to the left here and have this open world experience, which honestly, achieving something like this with 2D layers it takes a long time. Again, I'd have to draw these mountains, I'd have to draw the ground, but here we've got everything as meshes, which is really cool. So let's exit play mode and then add in a sprite shape to our spline here. So as you can see, we don't have any sprite shape currently, but I've actually gone ahead and created something called grass and that's going to create grass for us. And as you can see, it's a much lighter color, so it stands out from the background. And all these are, if we open up this dirt texture, really it should be called grass texture, but it's called dirt texture. We can open this up in, inside of Photoshop, and you'll see it's just a green square. And then what we also have inside of our sprite shape is a grass top texture which is basically going to show up at every single angle um, so let's open up that and you can see it's just a simple drawing that I threw together really quickly and what it's doing is it's looping across the surface of our sprite shape if you want to get a more in-depth tutorial of sprite shape there's plenty on YouTube just Google uh, sprite shape tutorial and you're immediately gonna figure out how easy it is to use sprite shape so that's our sprite shape and it has our grass texture on top of it. So if we hit play, now we have this beautiful look, this open world experience 
Um, and again, it's just utilizing meshes and terrain. Now the funnest part here is definitely going to be adding trees. Now, for those of you who don't know Unity's tree system, that's totally okay because inside of standard assets, they have trees available to you that you can use right away. So if we jump into our terrain and go to our tree tool here, we can actually just go ahead and add the broadleaf desktop tree um, to our brushes here. We can just start adding in that tree. And again, this tree is included in your standard assets. So let's decrease the brush size and also the tree density. Just the height, maybe make it a little bit shorter. There we go. And let's just start drawing trees in to the background here. So let's try to add a tree there, a tree there, a tree there, a tree there. And as you can see, I've edited these trees materials a little bit to be a little bit more basic. There's no texturing in the bark to give it that look of being more of a 2D game. Again, it doesn't look perfect, I promise you, it doesn't look perfect. But I think overall, it gets the point across of how we're gonna make this 2D game look like it has depth. So we have some trees here, so let's hit play. Get an idea of how it looks. And as you can see, the trees will start to blow in the wind here just a bit, and there we go. And the trees are blowing in the wind. This is a really cool feeling for a 2D game, or a 2.5D game. Um, again, the trees don't look perfect. We could definitely remove a lot of the shading um, from the leaves. But overall, I think this gets the point across. Now, the best part of creating a 2.5D game, or really any 2D game with parallax, is adding foregra foreground elements. Now because the, the terrain sort of hits right up snug against this 2D portion here, um, there's not a lot of room here to add any foreground elements um, near the camera. So what we can do is simply just drag that prefab of this tree. Let's drag it into the camera, zero it out, and then drag it out of the camera. That just gives us a position near the camera. And then we're just gonna drag this tree into the foreground, so in front of the player, and just start dragging some trees along the x-axis to give some depth. Okay, let's hit play here. Here we go. Obviously we'd <laughs> make the trees not cover so much of the camera, but overall I think this is definitely the feeling we want to achieve for this game. Now again, it doesn't look perfect, but what you can achieve with this system is is seriously amazing. I promise you guys this wasn't available um, 10 years ago, or at least maybe five years ago when, when a lot of you started making games. Um, I know a lot of my audience has been making games for a little bit, but for me, over a decade ago, this was not available. The ability to create something pretty much out of the box like this, um, and you can imagine how important it is to have something that allows you to create a limitless environment like this. Um, if you ever wanted to make changes to the background, it would be really easy to do. You wouldn't have to edit any PNGs in Photoshop or change the layering. Look how beautiful that looks, that depth. And if we run to the left here, notice how everything gets a lot more foresty. And it's just by simply adding in some trees um, and some mountains in the foreground and you've got a forest. This kind of, um, uh, this ability to create this 2.5D environment um, I think hasn't really been utilized yet in Unity. At least I haven't seen a lot of games that do something like this. Um, but I think it definitely needs to be utilized uh, because U Unity has all of these tools available to us. Um, so that's basically it. Wow, was that not the easiest, coolest thing you've ever seen in your entire life? I bet. Okay, if you like this video, do all those cool things. Click the notification bell, subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll try and answer as best as I can. Remember, you guys can support me by supporting Skillshare or heading on over to Patreon, supporting there and getting a free copy of Pinstripe. Also, remember, you can wishlist my games in the links in the description. All right, guys. Uh, thanks. Bye. Love you.